This is the story of Euphemia Ross, known as the Surprise Queen. Euphemia became the wife of Robert II, the first Stuart King of Scotland, but she was born in 1322 to an influential and rich family of Ross. Probably brought up in Dingwell Castle and brought up as a, a member of an influential, rich family. She learnt all the arts expected of her and she was brought up to be a dutiful and fruitful wife. But at the tender age of seven, which seems incredibly young to us nowadays, she was affianced to John, who became Earl of Moray, who was away for a great deal of the time fighting the English. When Euphemia did marry John, when she was 21, she went to live in Darnaway Castle in Moray. Within three years, however, John was killed in battle and she became a rich but childless widow. This might have been worrying to her as being or providing an heir was one of the most important duties of a wife. Men were also recognised as infertile and the test for this was for man and wife to go to bed together with the wise women of the countryside around the bedroom. Then, if the male member refused to act as it should, the marriage could be dissolved. Euphemia would already know Robert Stewart, who became Stuart. He was the grandson of Robert the Bruce, here seen on horseback, riding into battle. And he was thus an important person and a steward of the kingdom, very important, rather like our Lord Chancellor today. Euphemia probably found Robert charming. He was tall and handsome. He was known to have mistresses. He was well liked. His wife had died and he had nine children already. So he was unconcerned about Euphemia providing more children, but he liked the money and the lands she would bring with her as a widow. This would include the lands of Badenoch, here in the picture here, as, as now as a ruin. And she went on to marry Robert in 1355 at Dundonald Castle and had two sons and two daughters by him. Nevertheless, she did not expect to become a queen. David II what was expected to have an heir. He was uh, still in the prime of life and died quite unexpectedly. This shows the steward succession to become Stuart from Robert the Bruce down through Robert II, his grandson, and right down to his son John, who becomes Robert III, his nine children by Elizabeth Muir, and his four by Euphemia Ross. A large family and one that provided its own problems in that many of them spent a lot of time arguing over lands, possessions and titles. However, Robert becomes king in 1371 with Euphemia as his queen. She wasn't crowned immediately, but eventually she was. And Dundonald Castle was a favoured royal castle and a busy place, almost like a small township, humming with men doing every job you can imagine. Estate offices, law courts, cooks, grooms, tailors, bakers, blacksmiths. Euphemia and her ladies would stay in one of the towers, but they would be responsible for much of the gardening, the provisioning of the castle, and the health and well being of the inhabitants. It's hard to imagine today what Dundonald Castle was like then, but Euphemia certainly queen of this castle and was very much expected to run the castle as queen. She would be dressed in the best of, of wool and brocaded silks. She would wear them against the cold, undoubtedly, which the castle then would 
B. It was a cold century in the 14th century. And she would wear jewels. She would wear gold, rubies, silver, Scottish river pearls. She would definitely look the part. From time to time, they would leave the castle and travel to other castles all over Scotland. Edinburgh, of course, was important and did not look quite the same as it does in this photo here, but was nevertheless a form, one of the foremost castles in the kingdom. Again, castles became insanitary. There was no running water or toilets. You had to change castles to let them be scrubbed out and refreshed. So here in Edinburgh, Euphemia would be entertaining, keeping all the warring nobility on side, keeping them fed and entertained, keeping peace amongst her various stepchildren, raising her own brood. She would hear petitions, dispense charity, and she would very much expect to be a patron of the arts. She was kept extremely busy. By the time Robert became king, his eyesight was deteriorating. He may have had cataracts, he may have had macular degeneration. We don't know if Euphemia provided herbs to soothe his, his eyes, but certainly John, his son who became Robert III, took over much of the kingly duties. But Euphemia was still important. Here in the picture, it is actually Robert the Bruce with his daughter, but they would have been dressed very similarly uh, in, in these clothes. She developed herb gardens. She would grow everything needed, both for freshening drinks, making things good to eat and drink, and also narcotics such as mandrake, hemlock and poppy were needed. You couldn't merely go and get an aspirin or a paracetamol. These were the only painkillers that were available. She died in 1387, age 65, three years before her husband. Worn out, probably, with all the duties of the time, but certainly a very good age for, for the 14th century. Euphemia is probably buried at Schoon. This is the little chapel at Schoon. Euphemia is probably buried here as all the kings and queens of Scotland were, and indeed they were crowned there as well. Schoon was an important central area which all the nobles and various important people could get to easily. She had a good life and she had a busy life. She is an important person in her own right. <laughs>